My Govan and Melonine, and well met indeed. I'm Arik here, Galadirathan, and welcome back to Middle Earth as we continue on as Khazadum. Khazadum. Things took a little bit of a turn, I'm afraid, and about three people noticed in the last one that, again, I messed up, I'm afraid. And um, I did that by not standing in the red circle, as quite a few of you pointed out. So, um, unfortunately, the script bugged and it was never going to progress. So I had to replay basically the entire thing, which has made two things different. Number one, I didn't bother walking all the way there because I did it immediately after the last episode. I just couldn't be bothered to do that, which is why you can see there's only these little circles because I cheat moved Baal in there, which has had the un adverse effect of meaning I've got there about 10 turns earlier than we did in the first episode. But this time the script has at least worked. And we know that because now we can stand wherever we want, as you can see. And oi and Ori have joined us. So Oin joins you as a standard general, and there he is. He comes with Zenith Guard, the standard bodyguard for Khazadum, and Ori joins you as a diplomat. So you get a diplomat early doors. It has meant, because I'm here a few turns earlier, that Moria haven't built this up as much as they did last time, so it doesn't make as much money as it did before. But otherwise, in all other forms, I would stay basically the same, except we now don't have any Corsairs of Umbar either because I didn't bother hiring them on my way through. So we're here a few turns earlier, but it means that the script at least now has worked. So this first long spiel is a warning to each and every one of you. If you are to partake in the quest for Hazardum and the expedition from Erebor, then be sure to always stand in the red circles. For if you do not... Nothing happens. So um, that's the lesson that we've learned. Always end your turn in the red circle right up until you reach Khazadum. Now, as we've reached Khazadum, I've popped in building for a stoneworker's hall. I ended the turn to make sure that the script would work, which is why one turn has passed since I captured it. But otherwise, we are at the same point we were before, but now the script just works. So let's go and talk to Lothlorien. Yes, sire. With Ori. Uh, oh, I don't need to do that, do I, actually? Because Lothlorien, not only my allies, but we have military access and everything's hunky-dory. In fact, we are... This is always the problem with the Khazadum script in my mind, but it's a necessary evil. You're allied to everyone that's good in and around Khazadum. So even though the message at the beginning... That was the other thing I didn't talk about last time. Even though the message mentioned that the Sylvan Elves don't really like us and we might have to actually fight Lothlorien... That will never happen unless you want to fight them because they cannot break the alliance, thus they cannot fight you. Uh, but anyway, there we are. That's where we're at. Now, Captain Mah Malhur stands oh, between goodness. us Thank and Khazadum West, the goblin capital, where Lungor defends it with an army of, in, in essence, trash. Our army, a slightly different makeup and composition to last time, as I say, but we've kept some of the um, elite units that we had. We've got none of the Bjornings, none of the Cav, and none of the Corsairs. But we've got a fair amount of money because we're here so early, and we can put that to good use. Oh, can I only train two units at a time? Are you joking? Oh, dear. Um, I'll take the volunteers then, and then we'll take two of them. And then once those four are done, we shall march. We shall march. Uh, do I need two diplomats? Yeah, we can send one west and one east. Uh, you go and talk to Rohan then if you can't go over there. All right, and otherwise, let's end the turn. So thank you all again so much for your comments on the last episode. It was overwhelming the number of you that sent congratulations through. So thank you to all of you. And I'm loath to do it, but I should con I should say that Arena Nets and Guild Wars 2, they did not give me a gift. Somebody called Empsy, one of one of you watching along here today. Thank you very much, sir. You gave me that gift. But bizarrely, the way that it shows up in game, because it was a gift from the Black Lion Gem Store and not a direct player to player gift, it shows up as though it has come from the Arena Net team. So it is, in fact, um, just their bizarre UI choice that led me to believe that they had given me the gift when, in fact, it was one of you, my supporters. So um, that whole thing about Arena Net is, is undone, really. Kazadun built its Stoneworkers Guild, and why, I ask, you ask, why, Galu, are you going for the Mason, Mason line so quickly? Well, number one, I always do, um, and I, old habits die hard. But two, we want to get that mining network up, and then we want to make considerably cheaper the insane cost of the Mithril Mines, which are 55,000 gold coins to construct. So we want the Stoneworkers as fast as we can. Are we losing some money? i tell you what we should do is we should lose some of the money because I cheat move myself here um, about 10,000 that should do yeah um, we don't want to take advantage I didn't think about that until just now I realized obviously course, the, those extra 10 turns meant that when we arrived at Khazadum in the last episode we only had about 3,000 gold didn't we 
Whereas now, obviously, we're a bun. We are f swimming in gold. Oh no, actually, um, Oin, go and build me some towers because the tower coverage in Castleton is awful. I want mapped from the south to the very north. Right now, we can turn our attention to how do we actually win this? Then our victory conditions are threefold: defeating Dunland, defeating Moria, and defeating Gundabad. Now, Gundabad, there's going to be a bit of an overlap from our Sylvan Elf campaign, of course. Uh, but hopefully someone else will deal with them by the time we get there. Moria, though, we fought them, but we didn't really defeat them, did we? We only took Goblin Town and called it a day at that. So we're going to be really kicking Moria into the dirt, but they should die fairly quickly. And then we have Dunland. Now, remember that many changes have gone on for Dunland, so there might be some units you've not seen when we fight against them. Um, but that will all change this week, because instead of a Battle for Middle-Earth video this week, I will do the Developer Diary in its place. So there just won't be a Battle for Middle-Earth video this week, but I don't think anyone will mind that too much. There aren't many of those videos left. So I'm, I don't mind that I can knock that around. And I don't want to do five videos this week. Uh, or six, I think it would have been, if I'd done Battle of Middle-Earth and uh, the other. But anyway, the developer diary will take the place of the Battle of Middle-Earth. So it should go up probably on Sunday, maybe on Friday. I haven't decided yet. I like to be a bit flexible with it, to be honest. The only thing that I think you... If you are, if you are starting out, if you want to become a YouTuber, or you want to become a Twitch streamer, or you want to do any of this, um, I would suggest that um, having a routine is invaluable and is very, very, very good. But I think that applies primarily to live streaming. Because your videos can be watched at any time, it doesn't really matter as much when your actual videos go up. Um, and they can be one this day or that day or this day or that day. Trying to keep them at the same times in the day is a very worthy objective. Okay. But it doesn't matter nice too time. much if they if you're supposed to upload on a Tuesday and you do it on a Wednesday instead. But make sure that you upload them at the same times each week. So people know, uh, for example, with me, I get lots of comments from you guys over across the pond saying, oh, it's one o'clock in the morning, a gallo upload time. And little things like that. Obviously, for me, they go up at six o'clock in the morning. If you they go up whenever you are, depending on your time zone. But having them go at the same time is very important. And live streaming at the same time each week is very important. Because obviously a live stream, people will either miss it or uh, they, they have to tune in live. Of course, they can watch it afterwards. But the, the draw of live streaming is that it is live. They can talk to you. So try and have your live streaming at the same time each and every week. That That is how you ensure live streaming grows. And videos, try and upload them at the same time. Not necessarily the same date, but the same time. And that would be my tip to you all. The wings of the Silver Swan have spread far, and the power of Dole Amroth has become great, rivaling that of the heights of its protector. Ships of the Swan are seen all about the Southern Ocean, and the ground shakes as the hooves of the famous knights sweep away all those who oppose the Prince of Dole Amroth. The soldiers fight with a fervour that is scarcely seen in the bleak lands of Gondor, and now more than ever is it apparent that they are descended of elves and men. Interesting, they capitalise the elves, but not the men. The banners of the Swan are now a common sight and spread fear and doubt amongst those who would fight against them. The song of Amroth and Nimrodel has become the most feared war cry of the south. The wind was in his flowing hair, the foam about him shone. Afar they saw him strong and fair, go riding like a swan. Interesting, though, because he dies, doesn't he? So he goes riding like a swan, and he's strong, and his command of the waves is second to none, but he's never seen again. So can't be that much of a command of the waves, can he? Right, let's get Rohan on side. Why not? Um, we're going for the victory conditions. I would quite like to attack Lothlorien, though, I have to confess. I like to play the games a little bit differently. Uh, I don't want to just this go for the evil nations. Two thousand. Go on, then that will help us drop our money again as we well. We cannot thank you until we meet again. Oh, we got a little bit of recompense for that. Oh, Rohan are doing very well. Oh, we've reached all these places. I'm. I really do approve massively of changing these to pictures instead of videos because the first time you play the game. I, yes, they're interesting little reads, and the videos, if there are videos, are, are interesting little snippets. But other than that, all they are is jarring and annoying. Although now that I've said that out loud, the same basically applies to the pictures as well, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, didn't that was a poor argument to make, Gally. Just casually speaking in a third person. Right, let's hit Kazadum West, shall we? And we're going to hit them hard, we're going to hit them early. Oh, and I've got a temp save. Oh, yes, of course, because I was doing the... Uh, I was saving as I went along in the other script. 
Oh, something else I didn't do, actually, which I... Oh, yeah, I forgot, totally didn't mention. I didn't fight the battle at Bjorn's Halls in my second go-through. So Bjorn's Halls has actually fallen to Dol Guldur, but I thought that was probably better in the long run for us to have an actual challenging campaign if the Anduin were to lose their capital city early doors. So I didn't side with them. I didn't help them. All right, here we go. Orc defenders were added, five of them, but they're trash, really. And because we're attacking from within the mountains, we get to attack Khazadum from inside. We don't have to fight our way through the door. Another aspect of that intro message that was wrong was that it tells you that you're standing before the gate of Khazadum West. And of course you don't. You attack from the east where there is no gate. <laughs> so, there was so much about that message that really could do with a, a little going over. Welcome to the Dwarodwelf, the halls of Moria. We have a very, very similar battle map. In fact, I think what they did for the town centres in both of these maps is they basically just copied and pasted it. And I say they, I mean the original creators and then Leo... <laughs> uh, because obviously being indoors isn't really actually a thing that the game recognises. You have grass on the floor and you have trees. And in this winter there's snow on the floor as well. But this way is much easier to attack. So we line up our dwarven archers. And we make our way through the hall. The enemy's walls. Oh, nice. And we've already captured their walls. Interesting that you can't go wide. That's bizarre. Right, that'll do though. All right, and in we go. Are they going to come and try and meet us, or are they going to? I'm going to group all of them because they're all the ones with full health. Move them forward. Now the pillars, I think, do count as buildings. Maybe it'd be interesting to see if our arrows fly through the pillars or not. It's been a long time since I fought here. I can't really recall. Also, something else I should mention is I absolutely am well aware that when you play as Khazadum, you should get the Dale Cavalry mercenaries from Dale and Erebor. But in the episode when I started all of this off, I, it's a small and imperceptible part, but I did actually check when we were in Dale, and that's where I've made the mistake. I checked when we were in Dale to recruit the mercenaries, and no mercenaries were available. So I just thought, oh, that's interesting. The Dale mercenaries aren't available on turn one. It won't matter. We'll just go on. Uh, and then, of course, many of you commented and were like, oh, Rookie Aragalli, you didn't take the Dale Cavalry mercenaries. And, and I did look for them, but I, they weren't available in Dale. And, of course, the real error on my part is that they're available in Erebor, not Dale. So that was where the failing lies. Um, so I apologise for that. But we did obviously get the Bjorn in Cavalry, so that made up for it. And in any event, we took Khazadun without any trouble. So the Cavalry didn't matter in the end. But cavalry, of course, there was one battle in the previous episode where I moaned about the fact that the enemy had archers and I would remove them because it's just a nuisance for an early game Khazadum army to deal with archers. But of course, that's because I stupidly didn't train the cavalry. So you are all, of course, correct. And I should have checked Erebor, not Dale. But I'm just defending myself in part in that I did think of that, but I just couldn't see any mercs in Dale available. So I just assumed there weren't any available full stop, which was the error. The error of my ways. Also, something that was commented and received a fair bit of upvotes, actually, which I thought was quite a good idea, was instead of just doing a video, instead of doing a sort of semi-law video where we just bash The Hobbit for, um, I don't know, 30 minutes or so, why not do a video that actually champions the things that The Hobbit did right? Because there are some things in The Hobbit that are wonderful, and we can all agree on that. We might not agree on what those things are, but we can agree that there are things that are well received. And also, I think, just for the benefit of the channel, it would be nice to get back into a little bit of covering some sort of law-based topic. Uh, and I think that's that's something that I should definitely consider. But the, 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 the problem as ever is that life just has become busier and busier and busier the longer this has gone on. And so... Um, I now have even less time than I did at the start, but I would really like to do that. I would really like to sit down and go through each Hobbit film and give you my opinion on what I think they did well, rather than just a, a bashing of the Hobbit movies. Because you've all seen all the lore channels, I'm sure, bash the Hobbit films non-stop. So it would be nice to get a bit of a different opinion than it, to, to actually champion some good about them. All right, let's come out of time six. Let's kill off the Vanguard here. Although some of our troops, the pillars do indeed count as obstacles. And... Oh, that's interesting. They count as obstacles as far as the ground is concerned, but not in the air. So the archers can fire through them. 
Yeah, that arrow just went through. There's arrows going through here, left, right, and center. Yeah, so arrows can fly through them, but units can't walk through them. Which would suggest to me that the base of the of this is considered a structure, but the rest of it isn't. So there's a room and scope for units to fire through them. <laughs> They're odd. Also, I had a very depressing realization when I recorded the Warhammer video this week, which I, again, I loved recording that. It was such good fun, and I was amazed that it still worked, which was a testament to the uh, modders, I suppose, because all of my mods worked and the game didn't crash. But something I I mentioned in that video is that I went back to using NVIDIA to record Warhammer because the Streamlabs OBS just cannot seem to handle Warhammer videos very well at all. And I was really sad to see that not only did NVIDIA give as good, if not better, quality than uh, Streamlabs, but it was also one-fifth the file size. One-fifth. It is ridiculous. My videos on Streamlabs OBS for Warhammer, as an example. Uh, a Warhammer video is about 45 minutes long. And on Streamlabs, that file size will be about 50 to 60 gigabytes in size because I try to make sure they are the best possible quality I can muster. And in recording it on NVIDIA for that length of time, it was 11 gigabytes. Oh dear, sorry, I don't have a glass of water. Coughing non-stop, but all you hear is a little click and then silence. All right, we've moved archers up into place again. We've killed more than them, more of them, which isn't surprising. They're going in to help with the wargs, and we'll get Barlin to come and assist as well. Yeah, lies Barlin, son of Fundin. Oh, I tell you what else we can definitely applaud from the last episode, which no one did comment on, but that's fine. You were all uh, congratulating me on the wedding and commenting on Jessica and I and the setting and all the like. But uh, I totally got the inscription of the door right, and I was so pleased when I read that, when I found the image that has the inscription on when I was doing the, the editing the video in post, and I saw the inscription, I was like, oh, yes, I totally got it right. I was very thrilled with that. It's nice to see that my memory hasn't totally abandoned me. Right, we've got some Kazadum Reclaimers, and I haven't shown them to you, which is a bit silly, isn't it? So here they are, one of Kazadum's absolutely best looking units. They no longer have bright gold armor, which was an excellent change. Because this silver armor, I think, look, makes them look refined. The gold armor made them look a little bit too sort of fantasy-esque. Uh, they've got the dwarven masks that, of course, the dwarves are famous for. Primarily in the first age more than any other. In the first age, it, we, we, are, we are specifically um, told of the dwarves' um, penchant for wearing war masks into battle. Such... And their masks were said to be so terrifying and frightening that the orcs could bear to, couldn't bear to look upon them, let alone fight against them. If, to be honest, if you like dwarves, the first age is a blessing and a curse because Tolkien, or Tolkien, as um, I believe he said his surname was, like, bad habit on my part. Tolkien describes the dwarves in the first age as arguably, any time he ever mentions them, he mentions something that is so cool about the dwarves that you can't help but really, really like them. But then equally, he barely ever mentions them. So it's a, it's a complete swing and a roundabout because you, you, you learn very little about the dwarves. What you do learn is always really cool. The story, of course, of um, the war masks is, is just a cool little tidbit. And um, the... Oh, I completely forgot his name. How annoying is that? Uh, ah, no, it will come to me. I'm sure it will. But the Dwarven King, of course, who wounds um, Glaurung the dragon by cutting his chest open. Uh, is it Glaurung? My knowledge of the First Age is so patchy nowadays. I just... I barely ever read the Silmarillion. So uh, this information is not stuff I retain. But anyway, the Dwarven King... I thought if I had tricked myself into flowing into it, I'd remember his name there, but I just can't remember it for the life of me. I'm going to have to look. I'm just going to have to search it. It's going to annoy me. And you're all going to be typing away frantically because there's people out there, that obviously, that all know this stuff on the top of their head. Let's type in First Age Dwarven King. It begins with an A. They're not giving us anything. It is at the Battle of Unnumbered Tears. The Arnoith. Arnoith. Um, Arnoidiad. Is it Arnoith? No, it's not even Arnoith, is it? Look, I'm all over the place now. Can't even remember the name of the battle. 
And also, what are we fighting over there that is killing off our volunteers? It's ridiculous. Right, go in. Let's get in there and finish those, please. Oh, it's all going to bother me. It's all going to bother me. Battle of Unnumbered Tears. Nirnaith Arnoidiad, of course. Come on, Gallo. Get your absolute head on a s swivel. Doom, 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 doom. Right, as our troops fight it out. I'm not even speaking now. It is Glaurung. I thought it was. And Azagal, There we go. We got there in the end. Azagal, the king of the dwarves of the Blue Mountains, wounds um, Glaurung, but he dies in the process. And then he is carried off of the battlefield by the dwarves. And such is the ferocity of the dwarven attack up to that point. The combination of the attack and the war masks and the dirge that they then sing as they carry his body off of the field. That not a single orc challenges their funeral parade as they leave the battle with their now slain king. Which is a cool story. Not cool enough for me to remember any part of it apparently, but cool nevertheless. And uh, But again, it's only one of a very few stories we ever find out. Right, what are we on now? We've killed... Oh, 70% of them have died. We are winning this horrible slog fest. But, uh... It's taking some time. Let's get in, stuck in amongst the peoples. Oh, they've got some mountain orc hunters out now. Arlen, give us an Orn Hobob. Grab your weapons! The banner of Khazadum. A bit wordy for a banner, if I'm honest, but nevertheless... Flies and marches. Something, a, a, a creed or an ethos that has been burnt into me for a very long time and is unfortunately a natural side effect of uh, being a solicitor is, or a lawyer, is that um, you don't need to know the answers to everything, but what you do need to know is where to find the answers. And any one of you who's watching along who's even remotely studied law will have heard that phrase at some point. And it remains so true to now. And unfortunately, I've rather taken that forward in almost every aspect of my life. So if I ever do a law video, for example, I no longer do them off the top of my head, because as you just saw, it would be an, it would be the most boring video you've ever seen in your life. So instead, I just know where to research it. I've got all the books that I could ever want. Everything that Christopher or um, John have ever published. I'm on first name terms with both of them. Privileged. Uh, I'm privileged, I know. Uh, but everything they've ever published, I have. So I know where to look up the answers. I know where to find these uh, questions. But I don't know anything off top, much off the top of my head. Obviously, you always know the essentials off the top of your head. Um, and that's the trick to being a good lawyer, is being able to cover the basics. But if someone comes at you with a very out there question, a, 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 a rare problem, you don't need to feel sad that you didn't know the answer to it. You just need to feel confident that you know where to find the answer. Right, the enemy general has died. This is going to cost us almost all of our troops, of course, the but taking and unifying Khazadum is we will, will be financially stable forever. Will be ours. There will never again be a time where we do not have the money we need. Uh, someone asked um, why was the pit at the bridge of Khazadum taken away uh, and that it was much better to have it in, it was more atmospheric. This is why the pit was taken away. Because you're casually looking over the battlefield, you've broken down the gates of Khazadum, you're storming into the first chamber, you're watching your troops, and then all of a sudden you're in a hole. Um, and it's just so jarring and so annoying. And the hole over under the bridge of Khazadum, it was a it was a real hole. It was huge. Uh, so it, it wasn't easily uh, manoeuvred. You couldn't get your camera around very easily. I just noticed that Barlin's taking a bit of a pounding. He's in amongst it, right in the thick of it. There are mountain orc hunters in there, and remember they're armor piercing, so they can threaten him. But I thought we'd just chuck the archers in, just bodies behind the ball, you know. Ach, my lord. Our men are in control of the city. I don't really mind if some of you die in running through all of that. I just want to overwhelm them. So that Barlin is secured. Can't, I don't even know how many of them are even enemies still. Oh yeah, that's worked a treat. The travellers have come in, swords in hand. Our enemy falls. 
power of the dwarves is unmatched. The victory we have won here today. Yay! Yay! Baruch Khazad! Dragon Slayers took 584. Jesus. And 74 of them still stand. I don't know how many were alive at the end of the last proper episode. But that many of them are alive now, which is good. Right, with Kazadums both secured, what we want to try and hit now is Ostinadil, the a town of the elves, as it translates to in English. Ostinadil is the next biggest one in the area. It's not the closest, Amon in a Rod is closer. But Ostinadil is the biggest threat. And then we want to go up and hit the valley up there, or the gorge. The Kala Gorge. Uh, I think what I'll do again is just occupy. Some excellent work there, everyone. Absolutely excellent work. Right, what's the free upkeep here? Two from that, and one from the bridge. That's rubbish. Have we got a pipe hole at least? Four free upkeep we can get here. Right, so we'll take two archers and two Khazad volunteers. Spearmen are, of course, useful as defenders against cavalry, but against infantry, they're actually they're, they're, they're not what you want, really. You, you, they can hold a line very nicely, yes. But when you haven't really got anything to do, act as an, a hammer to that anvil, then they're pointless. They're just a slower way of dying. Whereas at least the Khazad volunteers will kill more things. That's what we're going to try and bank on anyway. Right, get a Master Stoneworkers Hall here. Let's drop the tax rate. I'm not too worried about um, taxes. We want more people. Or we make, like, no money at all. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Alright, do we send Balin out to build a tower? It's a gamble, and I'm going to do it, because I like to live dangerously. Ah, Cavalry of Bree, welcome to the fight. My lord. My lord. It's very much how Balin dies in the story, really, by toddling off on his own. And indeed, it is the death of Balin that is the catalyst in the final downfall of the dwarves at in the real expedition. Balin, as I mentioned, is killed while he's staring into the mirror mare, where he sees the crown of Durin appear above his head, much in the same way that it appeared above Durin's head thousands of years earlier. Uh, and it is at that time that they are ambushed by orcs that they are not expecting. Hence the ambush. I mean, that's rather implied in an ambush, isn't it? It's just a battle if you're expecting it. And uh, Balin is slain almost immediately. And then from that point, leaderless, the dwarves and morale, obviously now in the gutter, the dwarves are slowly defeated and then eventually killed where their last stand is held in the chamber of Marzabal. <clears throat> I can't withdraw, so we have to uh, hope Balin gets out alive. He does. And we just lost that cavalry that we just paid money for. I don't really know why I got that cavalry now that I think about it out loud. It was a bit silly, really, wasn't it? Talk to the Dunlendings, we can do that. Wars and wizards, we have brought shame to all those who doubted us, my lord. Khazadum is ours again. We shall begin repairing the halls and burying the dead. Now that the halls belong to us once more, we should also start expanding our realm to gather the necessary resources to completely restore the ancient halls of Khazadum. Doing so would be a great opportunity to attract new citizens, miners and reinforcements to help rebuild Khazadum to its full glory. But be wary, we still have to purge the rest of the orc filth from the western side of the mountain and in the deep. We should always be well prepared for counter-attacks from the goblins who think they have claimed to our home. Lastly, while there has been no sign of Durin's bane as of yet, we should send word for an old friend, Gandalf, known to us dwarves as Tharkun. While that dastardly demon may have slunk back into the dark pits whence he came, there is nothing wrong with having a wizard on our side. Send a diplomat to visit Bree. Tharkun was last seen there in the company of a ranger with unusually long legs, so chances are the Bree folk know where our wizard is. Now, what that suggests to me is, again, the Khazad-dum script really could do with being revamped, because I think the message that we just received, although I skipped the Silvertine Wolves one, didn't I? I'll need to make sure that that wasn't anything important. Um, where's a pen and paper? Um, bum, bum, bum. Write that down or I'll forget it. I've got notepads on the go. I've got, always got notepads on the go. Apologies, this isn't something that I should do in real time because you're watching nothing happen, but uh, I am a creature of habit and flawed immensely. <laughs> and you have to suffer that. Right, I think that message should have popped up when we took Khazadum East because it mentions the western side of the mountain needs to be cleared. And of course, We've just cleared the western side of the mountain. So I feel quite strongly again that that is another point where the story, the, the whole script really needs a, a, a good little polish, really. But if the script hasn't been changed from before, which I don't think it will have been. Um, oh, the spire. Yes, go to Austin Athelfall. 
no further this day. And then we've got the Stop diplomats now. Here, um, the if we go to Bree and get Gandalf, you don't actually get Gandalf unless the script has been edited. All it does is it makes the Balrog fight not happen. So. And this is a leftover from when the Balrog used to crash the game. Of course, the Balrog no longer crashes the game. So it's no longer important. You can fight the Balrog if you want to. And I believe if you just continue on with the script without ever visiting Bree, you, you will fight the Balrog. And now that, that's fine. It won't break your game. But in Days Gone By, of course, it did. It crashed the game for a lot of people. So we put in a way out. And that way out was you could go and talk to Gandalf. And he would kill the Balrog off screen. So you wouldn't fight it. And I don't think that has been amended in light it's of the like fixed Balrog. On my way. There's Oth in the deal. Oh, it's a village now. Oh, of course. So it's actually not. That's not somewhere we're bothered by at all. But we will want Ostinithiel, and we'd want it sharply because Dunland are on our um, to-do list, of course. Um, we've got the Master Stonemakers, but we'd ideally want a Guildhouse. Time reduced by 50% and cost by 35 is a dream. Despite the holding both sides, we are barely making any money. It's because of the insane upkeep. We have got this fort down here, but it's not overly worth it. I was going to go and chat to, Gun, to uh, Gondor now if I can. Try and get them on side. And they want a diplomat to toddle off down to Dunland, don't they? Opening talks for them. Something to investigate. Something to investigate. Right, yeah, go and see if uh, I can't even get there. Fenestrin is being assaulted. We need to get our free upkeep back and sharpish. This side is also a town though, so it only has two again. Oh, but it's got a camp guard which gives volunteers. Is that because there's no dwarven cults? Twenty-three percent, yeah. Ah, oh, damn. Hot diggity damn. We could do with a four on this side. There's one down there. Or we could just press for add-on in a rod, couldn't we? The best way to make money is to kill off your, <laughs> your troops. All right, we'll leave behind... A, no, 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 no. Leave behind just one. That should do enough, shouldn't it? Yeah, there we go. Right, we'll leave behind him. He'll become free in due course. In When that reaches 25%, he'll be free. We'll build a smoking house when we can, then. That one's already rising up. That's not a problem. Uh, get, get, yeah, get great exchange. What the hell? Put some money towards that. Right, hit Mugrish first then. Will, oh, Mugrish, you've got an awful army. Absolute garbage tier. I mean, everything that Moria does is mostly garbage tier, but this army really takes the cake of garbage tier. <laughs> but I'll gladly put an end to them. That's not a problem. All right, we attacked them. We've got some archers, but they also have some range, don't they? Oh, we've got five archers, dear, oh dear. Playing the dwarves as an elf. All right, cavalry, you're going to be of use, and then the the slow line of death will march towards them. When one plays as the dwarves, one must close the gap as quickly as possible. Now, because we attack them, I think they're going to turn around and sprint up the hill. Yes, they are. We don't have very good range on our archers, though. And we're going to be fighting in the trees, which is, which is rubbish. Oh, we've only got 19, Cav. They've got some archers there. And interestingly, their general is some stalkers. And I think we could probably kill him off in the first charge. Here we come. Merchant Cav. Oh, the bannerman hit him. Yes. The enemy general lies dead. We have sent the car to hell. Car to hell. We are under Our attack. Men are winning the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. So pull the archers away. The rest of them are sprinting in. Go 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 go. You know what to do. All right, sod it. We'll use you as melee. The rest of you, fire at will. You guys, you're stuck in there. Particularly those Urugovices who are just charging at you. 
The battle is very much in our favor. If we remain true and steadfast, this battle will be, will be over ours. very quickly, I have no doubt. Let's get the cavalry to hit the archers. How are we doing up here? 48 Uruk Overseers, point blank range, Dwarven Travellers. Oh, no, tell you what we've not done is showing you what the Dwarven Travellers actually have. Three missile attack, nothing to really write home about at all, is it? Six melee and a ten defence, though, that's not bad for starting tier units. But all oh, Uruk Overseers are quite good. Eight attack and a seventeen defence. To kill them, we're going to have to surround them. Right, you go for those archers. Good charge. Hit them again. The main fighting that's going to be the issue then is those overseers carving their the way through one of our archer units. Yeah. They have lost half their men. Get the dragon slayers up there. The dragon slayers fought in that battle and didn't lose a single soldier. The enemy army in all of the 71 and almost all today. of them from the traveller unit that the overseers made it to. Oh, that was that was just a perfect lesson in how not to command. Don't don't do that. <laughs> don't follow my example there. <laughs> not the way. Oh dear, I've clicked. Shouldn't have clicked. Oh, that doesn't come up for you, though, does it? Yeah. Uh, if only Nvidia had as many options as Streamlabs, I'd I'd be set for for, for life. But as it stands, it's done. It done, and as it, I'm forced to use in this poor form. All right, push on. Let's get out on in a rod. Let's burn it to the ground. I don't think we need worry about our eastern side, if I'm honest. The nearest town is Goblin Town, all the way up there, and they've got to walk all the way down the mountains past two Anduin settlements. Uh, oh no, no one has the Lower Gladden yet, actually. So they might take that. We've got to watch out for that. My lord, at war. But losing a few more troops makes means making a bit more money again. All shaping up very nicely. Very nicely indeed. Um, there will be a live stream of Kazadom on Saturday. 11.30 in the morning this coming Saturday. Live streaming for you all. Uh, 11.30 British summer time. And then next week we'll be returning to the Aradanaim and our conquest of Mordor. Which is one of the first times in a long time I've actually enjoyed fighting against Mordor. I hope that campaign's been enjoyable for many of you as well. Uh, no, I don't want to give them my map information actually. It's just trade. This them. seems quite an honor and a pleasure. Farewell. Yay! More gold. We want to trade with as many people as we can get. Yes, He's off to Gondor. We could really do with Owen finishing his tower building project, but we need sight range. We we don't want to be caught off guard by the goblins coming down the eastern side. So that's it's a it's a something we must do. I don't think you need walls for this one actually. It's especially it's a unique settlement, isn't it? Inside we find Lanug the Bloody, and again a snagger trash army. Nothing to worry about. Yes, my king. Oh, and there's Fenestra. And there's Aragon himself. I'm going to not go for the Balrog and see, uh, not go for Gandalf, sorry, and see what happens. I know that even if you do go to Gandalf and you get the Balrog killed off screen, you are still attacked by a sizable army. Um, that definitely still is a feature of the script, I'm sure. Ah, speaking of attacks by sizable armies, we can kill a lot of goblins here. All right. Hi, Lord Balin, the liberator of khazad and quite possibly the greatest commander in the Middle Earth. One of only a of one of only a handful of generals who can liken themselves to great generals such as Ionwe and Gothmog. Uh, all trash. There's a couple of couple of wags, and again, we've already seen that one. There's the wags we've got to watch out for. All right, let's do this. Dwarven tenacity will see us through. There's Turin Taramba. The helm of Dorlomin. Is it the Helm of Dor Lomin? Oh, I haven't got a um, map of Beleriand on my wall. Oh, my keyboard has... Uh... Oh, there we go. Right. 
we were attacked. There are two of them. They're coming from there. They're coming from there. So we want to pull back. Oh, it's all forests. Ah. Ah, this little plane over here might be all right. But then we're fighting downhill. No, I think we should just stay where we are. But then they're going to flank us, and then they're going to flank us. We just can't afford that many losses. Let's move to this hill and defend over here. The enemy are bringing in reinforcements. Perfect. All right, standard noob formation, really. Um, we will take two archer units to form a nice wide line at the back. Two archer units to go just in front of those. And then the 51 of you act as a sort of fodder, really. Dragon Slayers, take that left-hand side. Erebor. Reclaimers. Reclaimers are an absolute monster of a unit. Right, and then the right-hand side is going to have to be policed by the... Um... Oh, Barling can go on the right-hand side. Yeah, into positions, right, you guys defensive mode. You defensive mode so that you fire even if you get caught in melee. Let's do this. Feel free to all actually move to where I told you to. I mean, I, I don't mind if you'd like to do that. Can I ask why exactly you guys are not doing what I've told you to do? Archers on the top, archers in front, and then 51 of you can just go over there, actually. Any danger? What on earth is going on here? Do what you're told! Now, finally. All right, we're in position. Even if it's taking some time. Oh, and it's bloody well raining as well. All right, the mainline forces that are coming against us are nothing to worry about. We can kill Snagger and goblins till the cows come home. There are a couple of overseers. There's a couple of mountain orc hunters who we ideally we want to drop. Uh, but the real threat, I think, is the slow and eventual killing of our force by the wag crossbows oh actually no no didn't realize how few there were no i don't think we even need to worry about them either now they attacked us as well so we can sit there and just wait so we shall do that no point stressing ourselves they also appear to have bugged out which is disappointing but also a dream because then we can use that to our advantage oh no there they go off they go Hmm, interesting. I don't know what's going to happen over here then. But one wild unit's decided to not get involved. Right, our own cavalry. There's only 19 of you. or oh, 17. Dear, oh dear. So try and stop, stop those scouts. You're Surely you're faster than them. Yeah, there you go. You, you kill them, surely. You'll kill them. Yeah, victory is certain. Right, elsewhere... Wags have tried to charge through. They've gotten caught. That's fantastic news. Mountain Orc Hunters. Bring them down, bring them down, bring the them down. is very much in our favour. If we remain true and steadfast, victory will be ours. Mountain Orc Hunters have no defence against arrow fire. Uh, it's almost like every arrow is a kill. They're, they're really weak to a range. And I'll tell you for why. Because they've got one armour and no shield. So, they do have a slight defense, that one armor. We've only got, obviously, three. Our archers only do three damage with each arrow. Yeah, and that's showing, because we only killed about 40-odd. Dragon Slayers were there to protect the left, and then they've not had to do anything at all. Up against a really weak unit. All right, you can all fire at whatever you like again. You might as well fire at them. They're right in front of you. Oh, perfect. Mountain Orc Hunters. Our right, Barlin. Are winning the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the... Oh, look at that. They were charging in and the dwarves reacted with seconds to go. And the dwarves said no. Don't know where their generals are. There is one actual general today, isn't there? Kazad Reclaimers with their cool-looking two-handed hammers. Very high-quality weapon skin there, actually. Always stands out when there's a weapon skin of some notable quality.
But until a general dies, we're not going to get any mass routing. They have got, obviously, very weak and low morale goblins and orcs. But when there's a general present, you don't really get the benefit of that. Not for some time. Ah, oh, Balin's protected at least. 108 of these. Good charging, I suppose. We've lost 10%, they've lost 30. I want every single one of you to target those archers. Lies dead. Oh, sent the car to hell. Captain or Lanug? Ah, oh, rad bag, bugger. Lanug must have a dedicated bodyguard. Mountain Orc Hunter's in amongst there. I just can't see a star on the map. He's not trapped over there, is he? No, because that's just Mountain Orc Hunters and Goblins. I don't know where he is. I don't know where he is. But a dedicated attack on the archers should stop them throwing things at us. Are you guys, some of you, throwing axes? Oh, a few of you are. Only half the enemy force remains. Yeah, the front line holds the enemy back. There you go. Go and get stuck into them. We still don't think, I don't think we've lost a Dragon Slayer yet against that Goblin Bear. Ah, the archers are now all dead. Target these snaggish skirmishers. That's good, that's good, that's good. We've got routing. Oh, Balin didn't die. Give us an on hubbub. Oh, I'll tell you what. Uh, archers, before you run out of arrows, target those wild scouts for me. The enemy are badly bloodied. Yeah, lovely. They have lost half their men. What a day. Goblin band. We lost a couple. Of course, they're spears. That was a silly idea. We're out of arrows. Look how our cowardly foe runs. It is time to press the attack. Uh, our melee line has been decimated. Seven Erebor infantry remain. We lost about six dragon slayers in the end. A fair few cows of reclaimers, I think, maybe ten or so. And the volunteers down to basically nothing. And now, though, the game's never going to end because of those units that are bugged on the edge of the map. Oh, they're coming. <gasps> they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. Uh, right, let's not have Balin in the front line. What we need to do is flank them. Try and create an area where we can get everyone to attack. Orc hunters, goblin infantry, wild riders. Oh, and there's someone here. Someone's just distracted us. Alright, take the take the hit, guys. Take the hit. Oh, they're going for the cavalry, that's interesting. There's our two very small and depleted units can we stand here. The yeah, those wags will die. And that goblin infantry is not going to do anything. Steadfast. Right. Will be ours. Dragon Slayers versus Mountain Orc Hunters. That's not an ideal matchup. Send in the uh, ones that are already depleted. Oh, Barlin, you might as well get involved. They're really desperate on hitting the cav, aren't they? Why did you do that? You weren't even fighting them. <sighs> they was clear gaps. And they decided to turn and hit them. It's just like they want to die. That's a bad matchup for the Dragon Slayers because they're armor piercing buggers. I think we got them. Some wild riders are still alive on that side. Dragon Slayers. Oh no, they're not too bad. They haven't taken too many losses. Cutting through them. I will lead the dwarves into battle. 
We've lost the Erebor infantry and the Khazad volunteers are down to two dwarves left. One dwarf, no dwarves left. Still, the merchant cavalry have done well. They're almost full experience now. Go on, you've got to run. Although Lanag just has never died, has he? Oh, we captured him. Time to press the attack. I have no idea where he was then. The enemy are utterly vanquished. Three hundred eighty-eight. This is a great victory, <laughs> worthy of only the mightiest of generals. Two, three hundred and seventy-seven. It's the dragon slayers again. The claim is at two one nine, two nine seven. Dwarven travelers, second place. So, excellent work. Dragon slayers are an absolute monster. They set out to destroy monsters, and in doing so. They have become that which they sought to destroy. Goblins will speak down the years, passing from goblin sire to goblin son, of the terror of the masked warriors. Oh, let me just have a think about this. Wipe them all out. Oh, and on an rod, exterminate the populace. We might have stretched ourselves just a touch too thin, but equally, we've also now just freed up a lot of money. Uh, and Balin's still alive, so we, I think we'll be all right. Oh, Darwinian's resplendent. Aye, noble sire. Marching now. Aye, noble sire. Setting a vigilant watch here. Uh, no, I don't Aye, need to do that. Noble sire. Oh, bugger. Setting a vigilant <laughs> watch here. By exiting, it gives Honor, them to us. Aye, Lord. Right, now with the funds that we've just received, or that we're about to get... Oh, there's enough there to buy both of the Stoneworkers' guild houses, I think. I think we should do that. So that one, you go in first, and then you go in second in the next turn. Or oh, two turns. Yeah, that's fine. That is fine. And another rod. Wild Breeder can't use that. Free money. It's free real estate. Leather Turner, Slave Pit, Barracks, all of those can be used. We're a, we're a normal barracks type unit, with the only exception being the Orokani Barracks, which I believe we do get access to. Where's our building line? Oh, Hall of Turin. Oh, that's up in Gundabad, though, isn't it? That doesn't make any... That's nothing here. I thought we did get the... Horakani. Perhaps not. It wasn't taken away from Casa Dum, was it? I think it must have been. Hmm, interesting. Unless it's because... Hall of the Seven. No, there it is. I think it might be script locked for the moment then. Mm, I can't remember the what we require to build it. It's obviously, it's certainly not available. A bit, it'll either be script locked. The reason it's not showing up is because at the moment it's not available, which tends to be because it's behind the script, as I say. Whereas the Hall of Durin, for example, or as an by as an example, the, the unique building, the Hall of Durin, which is available in Gundabad only, that is showing up already because it's not locked behind a script. All you need to do to build that is take Gundabad. So that's why it shows up bizarrely. Even though it's region locked, it shows in all the regions. It's a little oddity. Ah, he's almost reached the end, but he can build the towers. Perfect. But speaking of reaching the end, that is what we have done for episode number two. Oh, let's just chat to Condor first. Very well. What else do you have to suggest? How much money have you got? You can give me at least a thousand. Oh, you won't. You'll never give me a thousand because I've got hardly any settlements. Five hundred gold. Yeah. That'll hold be. Us at... Well, that seemed fruitful. Cheers, fam. Farewell. Does that mean we're building in? No, it doesn't. But we're making a lot more money than we were a second ago. Stick you. Oh, there are buildings in here that we can't that we can destroy. Didn't think of that. What about the wild breeder? No. No, we can use all of that. And we can use all of this as well. We'd be fools to get rid of any of this. It's all giving us income. We need to get our own mines up. The boost in mining quality is unreal. Huge boost. Culture increase bonus as well. And a population growth bonus. Very, very useful buildings. But anyway, as I say, for now, that's going to conclude the episode. So thank you very much for watching along with episode number two. We are now, well, we've done all of this and we still haven't even reached the point where the other campaign actually started. But I hope you won't, you'll permit me the minor um, breaches of code, if you will, uh, in order to get the campaign back to this point. Uh, I had to do, I needed to uh, 
replay the whole thing and I wanted to make that as easy as I could. But if you have any suggestions or comments or questions or queries or anything at all, post them in the comments down below. But otherwise, do stay tuned this week for another live stream, as I say, on Saturday and a developer diary coming to you at some point this week. Now, my weeks in my head tend to run with Monday being the first day and Sunday being the last day, if you're ever wondering. So that's what I consider my like YouTube week. But for now, and until we speak again, dear friends, have a wonderful day. And Navarre and then Pedamad Bellonin. And farewell.